Well, when you're thinking about whether you want to do embryo adoption, it can be really helpful to not only do your homework, but talk with people who have been down the road before you. And uh, if you end up doing that and then doing embryo adoption, you yourself may even become an advocate who can talk with people about the experience. That's, that's the road that my guests today have taken. Hi, this is the Embryo Adoption Podcast brought to you by the National Embryo Donation Center. You can find out more about us by going to embryodonation.org. Again, that's embryodonation.org. I'm Mark Mellinger, your host, and the Marketing and Development Director for the NEDC. And my guests today are Jeremiah and Carrie Chang, one of our awesome embryo adoption families. It's so good to have you guys here. I want to want to start by uh, asking how you found out about embryo adoption and sort of what your motivation was to possibly pursue it as you found out about it. Yeah, um, it sort of started... Uh, you know, I think both of us, we had a heart for adoption even before marriage. Um, I think since becoming Christian for me personally, um, you know, understanding and growing and this understanding of, of God's own adoption of us was, um, uh, was really transformative for me. That concept that, you know, God would bring his people into his family through adoption. And I think just understanding that we can partake in privilege of, of really tangibly showing God's adoption through physically adopting and, and um, providing for these children um, uh, was just a, a for me. So I think even before we got married, we, I had thought about adoption. And uh, I think, you know, as we got married, we talked about it more and we were sort of like-minded in that desire. So we actually started, uh, so after our, our uh, son was born, Azariah, he, um, we started the process of actually going to domestic infant uh, adoption. And so we started that process and we were in there, that process for probably, yeah, several years uh, and we're kind of matched uh, several times. And then for various reasons that never materialized. And then after our daughter was born, um, continue the process, but it was around that time that we found out about embryo adoption um, through kind of reading. Uh, for me, it was like reading a memoir of uh, someone had written something about their own story of embryo adoption. And that was the first time I had encountered the concept. And I think we had talked about it and we both sort of individually researched it even more. And I think, uh, so through that time, God convicted us of just, what embryo adoption is, how it's very much adoption, like any other adoption. Um, you're just sort of adopt child at a different stage in development, but God sees it the same way. Um, you know, they are still children created by him, right? After his own image. So God sort of convicted us about the reality of embryo adoption. And then also just the circumstances by which embryo adoption exists. Um, we were more and more burdened as we sort of began to uh, research about just some of the um, just sinful practices that were happening, you know, out there that resulted in the creation of these children um, and just the gross mistreatment of them. And, 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 the, and I, I would say the summary of it is more just like the clear dehumanizing of these unborn children where they're seen as mere commodities by a lot of people. Um, and I think, you know, seeing that and God just working in our hearts about that, um, we, we just believe this was the direction that we should go, um, switching from domestic infant to embryo adoption. Yeah, and I would say as we started to research more about embryo adoption, God really faithfully gave more passion to become advocates, you know? So it wasn't like, oh, we had this clear like calling um, and then we started to proceed. It was like, as we, you know, took little steps of obedience for God gave us more passion and um, just more love for these children and, you know, the embryonic stage of development. So that's kind of how we entered into this, this type of adoption. Well, and, and, and if I'm right, 
one of the steps on that path for you two was actually talking with people who had done embryo adoption, who shared your values, and who had gone through the NEDC before. I remember when you were here a few months ago and we met uh, in person, you talked about how valuable that was. And I, I thought, as, as you said that, that could be really valuable to unpack on our podcast. Um, so can you talk about how, how, that, how God used that to help you form your final decision to go for it? Yeah. yeah you can go. Okay. Well, for me, uh, so we connected with um, a couple, Paul and Susan Lynn, who had uh, walked before us many years ago. And um, I think for me, uh, because they're also another full Asian couple who, you know, did embryo adoption and um, adoption in general in the Asian community is pretty rare. And it's also um, sometimes it can be seen as taboo. And so, and then just embryo adoption, it sounds very uh, sci-fi <laughs> to my parents. And so we were just like, how do we even begin explaining this to them, the process, and then, um, explaining just the faith aspect. So when we connected with them and just seeing, um, you know, similar obstacles that they also face culturally, but then still continuing to persevere in this, um, knowing they are taking steps of obedience and it's honoring to God. I think that really just empowered us, you know, like when you're walking in obedience to God, there's inevitably gonna be pushback, you know, but, I was just really thankful to have previously connected with them, knowing like they are uh, kind of were in a similar boat as us, but um, God brought them through and he is faithful to bring us through as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think because um, we were sort of like, yeah, the first, we, we don't really know personally um, other people that have gone through it uh, in, in a deep sense, like, you know, you know, close friends. We sort of developed friendships all along the way. And that was really valuable because, yeah, there's a lot of just, it's, it's, a, it's very different, you know. I mean, uh, within the international or domestic adoption community, um, there's, you know, you can find resources anywhere um, and you can connect with people anywhere. And then with the embryo adoption, it's definitely a smaller community and you have to kind of go out and look for it. And, um, but it's there, but it's helpful because um, it's just, uh, there's a lot of questions that come up and I think God was faithful in, um, just bringing people that were like-minded and were, you know, going through, ado um, uh, you know, adopting these children for, for similar reasons. And that really encouraged us, you know, in our walk, um, because, you know, for us, the burden was, was, you know, to help these children to, feeling to God um, and uh, to just, and, and, and that was helpful, yeah, that other people were doing the same thing uh, with us. And I was encouraging that, yeah, there were other Christians who were also, you know, well, being convicted of the same thing and being obedient. Yeah, God actually used uh, Instagram to get me connect the solid Christian mom who actually helped, I guess, kickstart this journey as well. So, thanks. Social media can be part of the puzzle these days. In fact, it, it usually is. That's, that's just how it is when it comes to embryo adoption. And uh, just, just a quick word to, to you who are listening. If you're thinking about going through the NEDC or if, if you are going through the NEDC and doing embryo adoption, um, what the chains did can be really important. And you're free to ask any time if a couple who has walked the road ahead of you would be willing to talk with you, whether that's over the phone, whether it's having coffee in person, if you live close enough, uh, all you have to do is, uh, is ask me and I can usually help find you a couple. We have done that in multiple cases and I, virtually every time, I think every time, uh, you know, the, the couple that's wanted the help has said it's been incredibly valuable. So just know if you're going through the NEDC, uh, that's a service that it's our joy to uh, to provide. We, can, we, we don't really provide the service. We just help you make the connection and, and we're glad to do that. So I mentioned that you guys did take the leap. Uh, you have been here. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, you already have two children. So infertility was not uh, part of your story. You, you have 
two two children. Uh, Azariah is almost four. Alethea is two. So you're already well on your way to, to starting a great family. Tell me uh, what your experience was when you were here in Knoxville to uh, have your initial appointment at the NEDC and uh, how God has worked in your life since through the results. Yeah, uh, we, I mean, I think, you know, everyone has said the same thing, which is that everyone at the NADC has been very hospitable and very nice. And I mean, um, yeah, I, I think just actual contact with several people was really positive. And obviously Krista has been amazing at just responding and being helpful. And um, so, yeah, I, I think it was already like when we, we're going in, we were excited to meet people that we were corresponding to over email, you know, uh, to finally just meet them in person. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just a very friendly visit. Uh, it was good to, um, yeah, grateful that, you know, thankful that the, the metal part that all checked out and it was very painless to be honest. And obviously Dr. Keenan is great. And, uh, he explained everything thoroughly. And um, yeah, so, so we had a really, you know, it was a quick visit for us. We kind of flew in and then, you know, got it done and then flew out. But um, we were, yeah, we were very thankful that, you know, you guys have all been very helpful and patient and explained everything. And obviously it's kind of um, drinking water out of a fire hose on that first day because people come in and yeah, they just keep talking. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, did, but, and, yeah, and 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 I'm glad you said that. That's a good thing to camp out on. Is uh, when you go to that initial appointment, it is like drinking for a, from a fire hose. Nobody remembers it all, uh, and uh, so <laughs> it's good. I hope folks who are listening to this podcast will file that away. It's okay. These two got to the transfer stage, uh, you know, even though it was like drinking from a fire hose and they were sort of overwhelmed, you will too. And, and the other good news is we're actually working to significantly shorten those visits uh, as we speak. We still want to have that personal touch where we really know our families and make that connection, but at the same time, making it easier on you guys. And uh, so I can tell you... Uh, Efforts to do that are already well along in the work, so it won't be long that the visits no. <laughs> won't be as long. <laughs> Carrie, go go ahead, and and you guys should I should mention you know you you guys did uh, eventually come have your transfer, and we can talk about that as well. Yeah, I mean I think after the first initial appointment, um, it was just really reassuring. Like you know we're part of a very like minded organization. Um, every all the staff we talked to were very um, life affirming and just, um, you know, from the get go, these children in this, you know, embryonic stage of development, everyone viewed them as children, you know, and, um, you know, very mattered. And we were just really, we were, we were really thankful that, you know, we it, it just everyone was on the same page. Um, so I think we went home really reassured <laughs> uh, after the first appointment. And then the second appointment, the transfer, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that was, yeah, it was actually relatively painless too. The procedure was very fast, painless. Um, I think the most painful part was the full bladder um, and just preparing for that. But again, all the staff were really great. And um, yeah, we felt like it went really smooth. Mm -hmm. um, Carol was really thorough in explaining um, the development of each of our embryos. And uh, we ended up transferring three and two, thankfully, uh, continue to grow. And so right now, now I'm actually pregnant with twins. And we just found out last week that they are uh, one boy and one girl. I love it. I love it. How, how far along are you right now, Carrie? I am currently um, 21 weeks. Okay. So, wow. You're, you're really, I mean, okay, so you're more than halfway through almost to that stage that they would call viability. Uh, how exciting is this? For, for you guys, and I, I don't know, do, do uh, Azariah and Alethea, are they able to even understand what's going on? Alethea, not so much, but Azariah, uh, he does actually, he, he knows there's babies, you know, in my tummy, and he talks to them, um, he pats them, uh, and he actually understands there is one boy, one girl, but uh, we're still working on um, 
kind of formulating how to talk to them and you know these children about adoption and embryo adoption in the process. So yeah, that's kind of where we're at. I love it. I love it. This is uh, it's just so exciting. And uh, in, in just a few months, you're going to have a, a, a greatly expanded family from from a family of four <laughs> to a family of six. What well, you know, one thing that I've really been heartened by in my interactions with uh, with you two has been that you have really um, taken the bull by the horns and felt like you wanted to advocate for this for this cause and you know you've done that a good a good amount today you've unpacked what the experience was like you've talked about actual people here that you'll meet by the way Chris if you're those of you listening if you don't know Chris does our patient coordinator who's going to work with you uh, a lot leading up to the initial appointment Carol's our embryologist and lab director so those are a couple of names that, that you would get to know um, but I, yeah I love seeing uh, that you guys are so passionate about this uh, so talk about some of the opportunities that you have had uh, to, to sort of spread the word about embryo adoption, how God has used that. Yeah, that, that, it's been just incredibly encouraging how God has used, you know, just our journey, the convictions he's given us and how he's sovereignly like, you know, given us, you know, these two children that, um, so yeah, I think uh, you know, social media has been a huge um, avenue um just in terms of connecting with personal friends you know and, and kind of like being able to mass spread the word i guess um to people uh without having to individually talk to everyone so that's been helpful like we've been able to have a, a facebook group and share updates and um prayer requests and other things and you know we're thankful that we have a very supportive church community that's been just supportive of our journey very advocatingly on our behalf as well um and yeah it's interesting because you know when we started to become more burdened and advocating and uh, just sharing more yeah i mean most people don't know what embryo adoption is still you know and um it's kind of you know a good reminder because when you're in it you just kind of assume you know you just this is a reality for you and you just kind of assume everyone knows about it but you know, most people we talk to, they never heard of it, you know, and um, they're always like, oh, whoa, that's weird, you know, <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's so usually, uh, so so it's a good opportunity to kind of share, you know, like I said, what God has been doing in our heart and how he's led us into this journey, um, affirming like the personhood of these, journey, these children and, you know, um, and so God has really used, you know, this journey that we're on um, to kind of spread, you know, the word about these children and their need to be rescued from their state and, you know, that he's created each and every one of them. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, we, we've had Orphan Sunday, you know, celebration at church as well. And that was a good way to kind of get the whole church aware of embryo adoption. And we were grateful that our leaders were kind of supportive with us being able to present, you know, the NEDC there and, um, so that was neat too. Um, and then, yeah, Carrie has had many close friendships through the journey where she's been able to kind of share more personally with people who are interested or, you know, um, kind of, yeah, thinking yeah. about adoption in general, maybe this could be an avenue for them as well. Yeah, and I think it's also uh, having conversations with friends um, and just like Christians who, you know, say, you know, we're pro-life and reaffirm personhood at like eight weeks gestational, 20 weeks gestational, but then bring it a little back further, like what about five days post-fertilization, you know, even though, you know, they're, they're little blobs, like these are still children, like we all looked like that at five days post-fertilization and just helping people see like, yeah, these are, these are children and this is a real adoption. And it's been really neat, um, just spreading awareness, you know, having these conversations. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and at least, I, I know of at least one couple that has come here, um, at least in part, because you guys spread the word because because they know you, right? I mean, we don't have to identify them by name, but okay, you've at least seen, seen that happen. Somebody else has caught the vision, right? Yeah, they're uh, really good friends of ours. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. 
well, they're they're a terrific family, and uh, we were we were glad to have them uh, as well, and uh, look forward to seeing what God does in in their lives. Um, you know, I, I guess the last thing I will ask you, um, and Jeremiah, you you mentioned it earlier. You know that there can be a stigma around adoption in the Asian American community. Um, I've, I've seen that in other communities as well. Um, is, is there anything you'd say specifically, any, anything about the process, tips, advice, things to look for or, or think about that you'd want to say to other Asian American couples who are thinking about doing embryo adoption? Here, here are some things that you should uh, be prepared for. Yeah. Um. Well, I think in the Asian community, uh, at least the more traditional, you know, uh, maybe family members, uh, the obstacle is like bloodlines and like that passing down the name. And, you know, um, I think that's why it's hard for a lot of more the traditional family members to kind of look past that. Um, and also just yeah, it's just it's just rare <laughs> within mm -hmm. the larger Asian community. Um, yeah, there's like so much to impact. So, so 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 be prepared to educate, right? When it yeah. comes to family members and friends, that's that's going to be really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I think I wish I can say like, oh, you know, if you say X, Y, and Z, then you can convince them. Um, there was a, a lot of prayer. I mean, even when we introduced the concept of adoption in general back during our domestic infant adoption days, we had a lot of um, we had a lot of questions, and we had some pushback from family, and it was really difficult. Um, and I think if we, I think it was just adjusting our expectations. Um, if we can only proceed after we get their approval, then we would never proceed, <laughs> you know? And I think it's just seeing and praying a lot. And God was faithful, bringing supportive people, you know, via church and, you know, friends could, you know, intercede for us. But um, a lot of, a lot of educating, a lot of practicing on how to present it <laughs> clearly <laughs> and not getting worked up. And then just, I would say just, yeah, faithfully, persevering despite the pushbacks um, mm -hmm. um yeah i mean i think it's you know kind of goes back to your convictions and what you believe god is wanting to do for your family and um but yeah i mean i think bringing it up early um may be helpful just giving them time for these discussions mm -hmm. or talking about it in general not necessarily saying that you're gonna do it might be helpful just to kind of get the discussion out there but yeah, every family is different. So, um, but I would say, you know, for us, we were fortunate that even though we did get pushed back, you know, everyone has been coming around, you know, and supportive at the end. So yeah, yeah slowly, yeah. Um, but it, yeah, it did take work. Um, but, uh, you know, we were thankful for the prayers of a lot of our friends and families uh, who were able to help out, yeah. That's great. That's great. I, you know, w one one last thing before we, uh, we go, I get, calls uh a decent amount i would say from uh from asian americans who are uh interested in doing embryo adoption and their question is um are there going to be embryos there for me and i you know i tell them al almost certainly yes because you know generally uh, the categories of embryos that, that we have and about and about the number stay about the same uh, over the ebb and flow as as uh, certain embryos are adopted out others come in that's just usually how it goes how did the matching process go for you guys was it was it difficult to uh, to select embryos i think that'd be helpful to hear yeah yeah definitely um yeah for us uh, you know it actually was not difficult um we had certain uh you know just based on our preferences and convictions we did have certain things we were looking for um and so it actually turned it out that just one um, sort of matched what we were looking for. And so it was kind of easy in that way. Um, but I mean, to kind of speak to your point, there, there definitely are, you know, uh, various, I guess, Asian uh, children in, in various makeups, you know, whether it's full Asian or half. Um, and, and so I think that is, yeah, something important for those who are thinking about pursuing uh, member adoption and no. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think 
yeah, sometimes I think less choice is better uh, in the sense of, yeah, I, I, yeah, there's, it just makes your job easier. You don't have to think too much about it. And I think fortunately for us, after we had these objective criteria we were already looking for, uh, really one made sense for us. And so that was really, I think it just was easier to have peace with that decision. I think the matching process can get kind of tricky and you can kind of feel all these weird feelings, you know, because it's like almost shopping and it's just not the greatest feeling, you know, to think about these are children, uh, but you know, it has to be made. So, uh, but yeah, we were fortunate not to, you know, have to think too much about it, yeah. We did see, uh, yeah, uh, quite a number of you know Asian profiles in both open and anonymous. So uh, it might be helpful just to be open to look at both before making you know your final decision. That's that's great advice. And and yes, uh, the the embryos will will be there, and and that's why we're here. It's our joy to care for them. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, and and you know, I'm so thankful to you too for uh, for being willing to do this and for all the other ways that you're spreading uh, embryo, the word about embryo adoption. I, I should mention that uh, we're, we're doing this pretty early in the morning. I'm in the Eastern time zone and they're out on the West Coast. So it's really early for <laughs> Jeremiah and Carrie. I really appreciate you taking the time. We are really excited for what God is doing in your family. And we cannot wait to see pictures of those babies. And hopefully we see them in person uh, down the line as well. So if you want more information on any of this, you can go to our website. It's embryodonation.org. Again, embryodonation.org for the National Embryo Donation Center. I'm Mark Mellinger, and this has been the Embryo Adoption Podcast.